The sweep shot gets its name from its shooting motion. It's a valuable scoring tool for players at all levels. Prolonged contact between the stick and the puck is part of what makes the sweep shot one of the more accurate shots in hockey. This shot is also a precursor for both the wrist shot and the snap shot and is one of the most common used techniques for backhands. Sweep shot, forehand. The first shot a young player should learn is the forehand sweep shot. Again, not only is the sweep shot a building block for other shots, it is also the most accurate. As the puck is released, the wrists should snap and roll toward the target with a short follow through. This shot is normally used when trying to keep the puck low. Sweep shot, backhand. The sweep shot is one of the most commonly used shots on the backhand because it can be done quickly and accurately. Gripping the stick with the hands further apart will enable players to get more power behind the shot. The puck travels from the heel of the blade to the toe as the shot is taken. The wrist shot both forehand and backhand, it's a surprise shot that depends on a quick release. Now, it's especially useful in scoring opportunities where space and time are limited, like when the play moves in close to the net. The majority of goals are scored with wrist shots. Learning and practicing the proper techniques for both forehand and backhand wrist shots will translate into more chances, more shots on net, and ultimately, more goals. Wrist shot, forehand, low. To take a low wrist shot on the forehand, the stick should be gripped with the hands wider apart than the normal stick handling grip. The player can generate more power when the bottom hand is placed further down the shaft. Finishing a wrist shot with a low follow through will result in a low shot on goal. Wrist shot, forehand, high. The high wrist shot uses slightly more knee bend and leg extension than the low wrist shot, helping to create the additional power needed to get the puck higher in the air. The puck is released with a snap of the wrists, either before or just as the puck reaches the forward leg. A higher follow through will also help raise the puck high off the ice. Wrist shot, backhand, low. The backhand wrist shot typically is used when a player wants to take a quick shot on the goaltender after faking a move to the forehand side. Here, the hands are placed slightly farther apart than with the forehand wrist shot, and the puck should be on the heel of the blade. The puck is kept low by using a short follow through and by turning the blade over and downward as it's released. Wrist shot, backhand, high. The high backhand shot requires more use of the arms and wrists to get the puck higher in the air. The puck is released with a quick snap of the wrists while turning the blade upward. The longer the follow through, the higher the shot. Wrist shot, in motion. Players attacking the net should attempt to shoot the puck while their feet are still moving. To be effective with this shot, players will not only need to develop a feel for just when to release the puck, but also the ability to shoot through a screen. Note that the puck is more in front in the stance and is not pulled backward prior to the release. As players become older and stronger, they'll be better able to release the wrist shot more quickly.
The flip shot is valuable when a player's in close on the net and the goaltender's down on the ice. The objective of the flip shot is to get the puck high in the air as quickly as possible. Developing quick hands and a quick release on both the forehand and backhand will help make the flip shot an effective scoring weapon. Flip shot, forehand. To be proficient with the flip shot, most players will need to slide their bottom hand lower down the shaft for better leverage. And by using the toe of the blade, combined with a deep knee bend of the front leg, players can also get the leverage they need to dig the puck off the ice. The puck can either be scooped up while stationary, or it can be dragged close to the body and lifted up all in one motion. A good snapshot is one of the most efficient weapons in the shooting arsenal. The quick release and high speed of the puck force the goaltender to react without getting set, and that makes it a very difficult shot to stop. Developing a strong, hard snapshot starts from the fundamentals of a good wrist shot. Then it takes practice, practice, and more practice to make the shot truly effective. Snapshot, low. The snapshot is similar to the wrist shot, with the exception that the blade of the stick is pulled slightly away from the puck just prior to the shot being taken. There are basically two kinds of snapshots. In the first, the stick is again pulled slightly away from the puck. As the stick moves forward, a quick snap of the wrist propels the puck. In the second variety of the snapshot, the puck is drawn toward the body and released with a quick snap of the wrists. The stick should meet the ice approximately one inch behind the puck. A low follow through will create a low shot. Snapshot, high. The high snapshot is similar to the action of the low snapshot but it's taken with a slightly deeper knee bend and a high follow through to get the puck up in the air. Snapshot, quick release. A quick release snapshot is normally used when a player skating down the ice needs to take a quick shot on the fly. This shot can be very effective, often catching goaltenders off guard. Snapshot, one-timer. Players can use the one-timer snapshot when there isn't much time to shoot the puck or to get a quick shot away before the goaltender is set. Here, timing is the key. The shooter waits for the pass and, without stopping the puck, fires at the net all in one motion. The slap shot can be an asset in any player's shooting repertoire. A goal scored on a big booming slap shot is always nice to watch, but one of the keys to an effective slap shot is to know when to use it. When a player can identify those opportunities and execute the shot effectively, that's when they'll start scoring some great goals. Slap shot, low. To take a low, powerful slap shot, the grip should be wider apart than the normal stick handling grip. When taking the shot, the puck should be close to the body and centered between the legs. The weight transfers from the back leg to the stick to the front leg. The stick should hit the ice one to two inches behind the puck. Rolling the wrists over turns the blade downward, which will keep the shot low, just above the ice. Slap shot, high. When taking a high slap shot, a high follow through and deep knee bend are necessary to get the puck up in the air. 
And this time, instead of rolling the wrists over, a continued upward path of the blade also helps raise the puck. Slap shot, one timer. A difficult skill to master, but well worth practicing. The one timer slap shot can be executed while stationary or in motion. And again, as with any one timer shot, timing is the key. The backswing should be timed so that the downward swing begins as the puck nears the shooter. Players can also practice the one timer on their own by dragging the puck toward the body and shooting while it's still in motion. Slap shot in motion. Of all the shots in hockey, the slap shot in motion has the most speed. Not only is the puck carrying its own forward momentum, it also has the momentum created by the shooter. As the player skates forward, the puck is pushed slightly ahead of the body. Then, transferring the weight to the front foot, the player begins to glide when taking the shot. Hitting the ice behind the puck causes the stick to flex, creating the force that propels the puck. Tips and deflections are two skills that most players don't practice enough, yet they're two of the most successful scoring techniques in hockey. The sudden change in the puck's direction makes it nearly impossible for goaltenders to react and make a save. Tipping or deflecting low shots up high or knocking those higher shots down requires good hand-eye coordination. Mastering these techniques requires lots of practice and repetition. Stationary tips, on ice, low. While keeping the stick on the ice, the blade is angled to redirect the puck onto the net. This should be practiced on the forehand as well as on the backhand. Stationary tips, on ice, high. This time, the shot is deflected up in the air by rotating the blade backward to form a ramp. With practice, players will learn how much to angle the stick blade, depending on how far they are from the crease. Stationary tips, out of air, forehand and backhand. Here, the puck is deflected out of the air by either an upward or downward motion of the stick. To perform this successfully, players will need to have great hand-eye coordination. Stationary tips between legs, forehand and backhand. In this skill, the player deflects the puck through the legs off either the forehand or backhand side of the blade. Moving tips, forehand and backhand. This tip is normally used to redirect a shot or pass that's heading wide of the net. Instead of using a shooting motion, the player angles the blade to redirect the puck. Shot pass deflection, forehand and backhand. This tip is normally used in game situations when a goalie comes out to challenge a point shot. Instead of aiming the puck directly on the net, the shooter purposely fires a shot wide so that a teammate can redirect it into the open goal.
When it comes to scoring goals, the more evasive and deceptive a player can be, the better. Selling a goaltender on a fake or a deke is all about being creative while handling the puck. It's important to keep the goaltender guessing while maintaining good control of the puck. Just like any other skill, dekes are perfected through practice. Try to incorporate a variety of shots and skills that culminate in the ultimate challenge, a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. Fake shot forehand, go backhand. In this move, the player fakes a forehand shot, then pulls the puck to the backhand and shoots either high or low past the goalie. Fake shot backhand, go forehand. Here, the skater pulls the puck to the backhand, fakes the shot, then brings the puck quickly to the forehand and shoots into the open net. Five hole, forehand. In performing this dig, the skater fakes the goaltender into moving to either side of the net, then brings the puck across the crease to the forehand side, slipping the puck through the five hole. Five hole, backhand. This time, the skater pulls the puck to the backhand side before sliding it through the goalie's legs. Gretzky move. Here, the player sets up behind the net and waits for a teammate to get open. Then, after faking the goaltender on a wraparound, quickly moves to the other side, sending a pass to the open teammate. In another option, the player skates behind the net, and as the goalie moves across to prevent the wraparound, the puck is passed back to a teammate on the short side. The chili dip. The player comes out from behind the goal, faking a wraparound. As the goalie goes down to cover the short side, the player turns to the outside and shoots the puck high over the goaltender's shoulder. The slider. Here, the player fakes a forehand shot, then turns the blade over, laying the backside over the puck. The player then drags the puck across the body and flips a backhand shot on goal. Drop and kick. As the player approaches the goalie, the puck is dropped into the skates, then kicked back up to the stick. The player can finish the move by either firing a shot on net or using another fake to pull the goaltender out of position. The cross move. In this move, the player scoops the puck onto the blade of the stick behind the net, then carries the puck around the net and tucks it past the goalie.
Off wing, one hander. Here, the player skates from the off wing toward the goal, faking a shot on the forehand. Then, using the top hand to quickly pull the puck onto the backhand, the player reaches around the goalie and tucks it in on the short side. Stick through legs, flip shot. In this maneuver, the player approaches from the side of the net and while cutting in front of the crease, brings the puck and stick between the legs and flips a shot on goal. Wraparounds. From behind the goal, the skater fakes coming out to one side, then quickly goes the other direction and tucks the puck into the open net. Freestyle breakaways. The following section is a compilation of various breakaway moves, which players should be encouraged to practice and master during their practice sessions. Shooting and scoring is the object of the game. More shots means more fun and more goals and you know what, probably more wins too. Remember there's no substitute for practice and repetition, especially when it comes to shooting the puck. The ultimate goal for any player on offense is to have a quick, hard and accurate shot. Developing these attributes will lead to more scoring chances and ultimately more goals.